All right, all right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free chica, chica. Learning. And in this video, we're gonna explain the projectile motion equations and maybe talk about real briefly about how to solve projectile motion problems. And before I get started, I hope you'll take a minute, hit subscribe, like, and share, support Structure Free. So our projectile motion problem is really a special case of curvilinear motion using Cartesian coordinates. And the power of Cartesian coordinates is that we take a two-dimensional problem and break it up into two one-dimensional problems. And, and we do that first by establishing an origin, which I'll say here, 0, 0, and defining our positive x and positive y directions. And with this origin, we're able to define an initial position and a final position. So our projectile motion problem, again, is taking a 2D problem and breaking it up into two one-dimensional problems, if you will. Or we start evaluating the problem by looking at one direction at a time. And so if I start look by looking at the x direction motion, positive defined to the right based on my choice of the origin, I know that the acceleration in the x is equal to zero. I know that the definition of acceleration is dvx dt. And if I integrate this, I realize that my velocity in the x direction is a constant v naught x, which means that the horizontal component of velocity is the same no matter where my projectile is on its path. So here is the horizontal component of my velocity. And no matter where I am on the path of this projectile, my horizontal component is v naught x everywhere. And if I describe v naught x in terms of like this v naught and theta that's shown in the figure corresponding to the figure, this would be v naught cosine theta. I also know that velocity is defined as a derivative of position dx dt. And so if I integrate again, then I will get that x is equal to x naught plus v naught x t like this. And, and these are all my equations in the x direction. In the y direction, I've defined positive as pointing upwards, and I have a case of constant acceleration. And that acceleration is due to gravity, which is pointing down. And so here, a negative g. And no matter where my particle is along the path of the projectile, the only acceleration that I have is the acceleration due to gravity. This A has a magnitude of G pointing downwards, and that's true everywhere. And so I have this case of constant acceleration, and it's useful to remember our constant acceleration equations, which I'll just write right here. So this is what we learned in 1D motion for the case of constant acceleration. In the y direction, because of negative g, all I've got to do is replace ac for negative g. And so again, if I integrate acceleration to get the velocity, I would get vy, v naught y, minus gt. And then my y position would be, and you can see the analogy between constant acceleration equations and the y direction motion. I'll number these, number one, number two, number three, and number four. Now, most if not all of our projectile motion problems can be solved setting up two equations and two unknowns. A lot of projectile motion problems ask us to find maybe the horizontal distance traveled or the vinyl position, maybe the initial velocity or the angle of that initial velocity. And that typically involves using equations three and four to solve two equations and two unknowns. And one of those unknowns is almost always time. In some cases, you're asked to find the maximum height that the projectile has reached. And that's associated with the case where vy equals zero, which means that we're looking only in the vertical or in the y direction. And we're looking specifically for when the particle changes direction in the y, com y component. And that's why we say vy equals zero, but that involves only in the y direction. And you'll typically use equations two and four. And what happens is, is that you'll use equation two to solve for time to reach the max height. You'll take that time and then plug it into that equation four, the y position equation, to determine the maximum height. You may have even seen a, an equation where you solve for time t and plug it into equation number four and for the position equation. This is, and this is equations two and four already combined with time substituted out. All right, well, that's projectile motion in a nutshell. If you have any questions, show up for class. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Structure first.